Greetings everyone, and welcome to the medical emergencies module of this series. Medical emergencies is gonna be kind of a hodgepodge of all kinds of different topics, all um, strewn together. So you're gonna find in here topics like fluid and electrolyte imbalances, hematological emergencies, sepsis, anaphylaxis. In a lot of ways, you may wonder how these all tie together, and well, they don't really tie together, but you will find a, a, a large amount of information on a variety of different topics in the section that's entitled Medical Emergencies. Now on the exam, Medical Emergencies makes up 14 questions of the total 150 questions that'll count towards your final score. So statistically, that means that 9% of the questions that you will answer when you take your CEN will come from the area that's in this module. So, with that introduction, let's get at it. So, as we've done in all the modules, let's start with a challenge question. The following rhythm strip is noted on the monitor of a patient. Based on this rhythm strip, what other symptom is this patient most likely to exhibit? Now, just a reminder, for those of you who may be watching this, or not watching it, but listening to this on audio, you of course can't see the rhythm strip, but I'd remind you, if you have the manual that goes along with, this course, the, the challenge questions are in the back and you will be able to see the rhythm strip there that goes with the question. So looking at that rhythm strip, what other symptom is this patient most likely to exhibit? A, pale skin, B, hypotension, hypertension, sorry, B is hypertension, C, muscular weakness, or D, decreased urinary output. Look at that uh, rhythm strip and see if you can figure out where this question is taking you. Now, as always, I'll give you the answer in a little bit, but let's continue with the material. So let's start with electrolyte imbalances, and we're gonna start with sodium imbalances. But in reality, sodium imbalances are actually more a fluid imbalance than they are a sodium imbalance. Because in a lot of ways, uh, sodium and the, the amount of sodium in our body is related to how much water is in the body diluting that so sodium. So in a lot of ways, when we talk about sodium imbalances, that's a bit of a misnomer. In, in reality, sodium imbalances are actually fluid imbalances. Um, the, the two go together. If you remember one simple concept, and that is that water always follows sodium, just remember that, then I think it makes sodium imbalances make more sense. Let me give you an example. Many of you who are watching this video may know that I had the privilege of serving as the ENA president back in 2018. So I spent a lot of time in Chicago. and. Don't get me wrong, Chicago's a great city, but I don't know about the weather there in Chicago. That's probably not the type of weather I like. So when I especially had to go in the cold of winter, I wanted to do something to treat myself for all the time I had to spend in Chicago. So I picked out my favorite pizza place in downtown Chicago. And sometimes in the evening when I would finish my work at headquarters, I would take the L downtown into Chicago to have my favorite pizza. Giovanni's it was in fact and it was an all-meat pizza so you know that there was enough sodium on that pizza to tie me over for about three weeks right I probably tripled the sodium in my body when I went downtown to have pizza but interestingly enough when I had my pizza and I ate all that sodium if you were to draw my sodium levels afterwards I was probably never ever hypernatremic now, how would that happen? How could I eat three times more sodium than I needed and add all that sodium into my body and yet never be hypernatremic? Anybody think they want to stab a guess why I was probably never hypernatremic during my pizza engorgement? Well, because what did I do while I was eating my pizza? Of course, I got thirsty, right? And my body would make me as thirsty as I needed to drink as much as was needed to dilute the sodium down. And I would drink a lot while I ate my pizza, and what I drank would add enough water to my body to dilute the sodium I ate, so that the dilution ended up with a normal sodium level. So what I ended up doing was adding all of that volume of water to my body, um, diluting the sodium and keeping my sodium levels normal. Now, of course, at a what, three in the morning is when your body chooses to get rid of all the sodium, right? So you diurese the sodium, but what comes out with the sodium when you diurese? 
of course, the water you drank comes out as well, right? And so I was never hyponatremic as I diuresed my sodium because I diuresed the equal amount of water with it. So the water and the sodium always went together. When I consumed the sodium, I consumed the equal water. When I diuresed the sodium, I diuresed the equal water. And I maintained normal sodium levels despite all the sodium I had with my pizza. Now, how does a sodium imbalance occur then? Well, generally, it's actually a fluid imbalance. An individual who is hyponatremic, who has a low sodium level, probably has way too much um, fluid on board and their sodium is too dilute. So their problem is more a, a fluid overload issue than it is a low sodium issue. And the opposite would be said for people who are hypernatremic. For people with a high sodium level, it's probably that they're profoundly dehydrated and they don't have enough water to dilute the sodium in their body. So overall, if I summarize this, hyponatremia will tend to be overhydrated people and hypernatremia will tend to be dehydrated people.